Gang, what's up y'all? So today, uh, as the request of many of our subscribers and also fellow anglers who I and Christy fish with, um, we're going to teach you how to fish with a popping cork today. Um, the popping cork is one of my favorite saltwater techniques. Um, it has uh, many different applications uh, that you can use it for um, and today in this video uh, I'm going to break it down for you, show you how to tie it on, and then we're going to go and catch some fish. that I like to use the popping cork for is when I'm either fishing from shore or I'm fishing right up against the shore and because fish obviously um, adhere to structure and that's typically where you'll find them um, when you're fishing just with a uh, like a jig head that you're fishing on the bottom um, you're gonna get it hung up so let's just say for instance All right, so obviously I'm no artist, but uh, this is a uh, pretty much a any like normal scenario um, where you'll have a bridge here, uh, and this is the water below it, and you'll have uh, the structure of the bridge as well as the structure of the of what's below the water. And it's let's say we're fishing like a jetty or um, a rocky point that's like near a bridge, which would be uh, mostly a, a pretty fishy area. Um, so a popping cork, um, if you're using anything that's, you know, you're just, you're, let's say you're, you know, casting over here and you're, you know, casting up against the rocks and up against the structure, um, you know, a lot of the fish are going to hang out in this region right here, which is where that you would be um, kind of like the danger zone. Um, if you're fishing uh, just straight to the bottom. So the popping cork will actually allow you to suspend your bait right off of the rocks. Um, you can adjust the length of the leader line, um, but this right here is an excellent technique that will put you on pretty much like any species of fish, whatever's here. Um, it could even be freshwater. Typically, I use it mainly for saltwater. Um, I even catch flounder on it. It's one of my uh, go-to uh, flounder uh, setups. Um, but for all of your other kind of main like inshore species, redfish, red drum, uh, trout, um, anything like that, especially when we're fishing a um, Anywhere that has a lot of structure to it, the popping cork works great because it can help you to suspend your bait uh, right there. Let's talk about another scenario real quick. Okay, so this is quite possibly one of the worst pieces of artwork right here known to man. But if you can bear with me, um, this is a situation for grass. Um, where a lot of times when you're fishing inshore um, and you're fishing like flats, like grass flats, um, this would be like shore right here um, or wherever the tide is, wherever the grass that's exposed is. And then below that, you would have grass that's in the water actually. So when you're fishing a uh, three eight ounce jig head or even a quarter ounce jig head and you're trying to um, put your bait right here which is the sweet spot. Um, this is really where you want your bait to be, is about in this zone, that would be um, suspended right above the grass. This is an excellent scenario for drum, tarpon, um, wherever you are across the United States or the world. Um, you know, again, this is one of the more plausible scenarios where the popping cork will work great. So those are just two examples of the popping cork. Um, 
But again, uh, the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the action of the popping cork. And so not only does the popping cork allow you to fish um, certain areas more effectively, it also allows the action of your bait to um, be more effective than even just fishing you know, straight to a jig head, main line to your jig head that you're bouncing off, uh, off of the bottom. Once again, excellent artwork here as you can see. I'd like to applaud myself on that. Um, so this would be the surface of the water. Here we have the bottom and here we have the fish um, that we are attempting to target and present our bait in the, in the best way. What the popping cork will do is, let's say this is your popping cork right here and your bait is right here. Here it is, it's suspended off of the bottom so here we might have some grass or some rocks. Um, and this right here is where the fish will hang out. The, this is where the predator fish hang out and whether it's crabs that they're looking for, little bait fish trying to hide in, into the grass. Now, once again, the first reason why I love the popping cord is because where it allows your bait to sit. So the location is excellent. Now the action is even more better. So when you pop the popping cork each time, your bait will do this number right here. And this right here resembles either a struggling bait fish, a struggling shrimp, um, whatever you're fishing with, um, or it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's like kind of like dying or trying to, uh, you know, just trying to get away from the predators. But it's doing that in a way that these predator fish have a very difficult time resisting, even if they're not in a feeding mode. Um, so again, the action of this bait is almost like it's like, you know, struggling to hop or to swim. So this is what the action of the popping cork looks like. And this is one of the main reasons why I love fishing the popping cork. This is the Cajun Thunder and um, it has some kind of like brass beads right here that make this noise. So another benefit of the popping cork is the noise that it makes. Um, so that right there will also kind of get the fish's attention as well. Um, so it's very important that when you tie this popping cork on that this brass um, bead, so it has brass and then like these plastic beads up top, um, that these ones are actually this is, this is the side that would be sitting on top of the water surface. You don't fish it this way, you would tie it on this way. So this side is gonna get tied to your main line and this is what's gonna get tied to your leader line. These are the jig heads that I typically use and once again, I will leave, you don't have to try and like, you know, uh, zoom in or anything like that or try and squint to look at this because I will have a photo of this as well as drop a line uh, in the comment section. This is the jig head that I typically use. Um, it is a quarter ounce uh, jig head. I typically like to go with red, and red also kind of goes back to, you know, sometimes color can be a really like a personal preference, um, especially for the jig head, but I prefer red because of the action of the popping cork resembling a struggling bait fish or shrimp. The red sometimes looks like it's bleeding, um, so that even more you know imitates that action there best. Um, the leader that I use is typically um, 20 pound test, and I'll also um, leave the description in the comment section below. And the more important part is my favorite bait to use with the popping cork. Um, I do like to kind of try and match the hatch, if you will, of what the fish are eating, um, but. Generally speaking, I love the new penny colored shrimp uh, Berkeley Gold. Um, in a lot of our videos, we also use the swimming mullets, which those work well. Um, you know, so really, uh, you know, anything uh, that's a soft plastic um, will be great. So you can also use the shad imitations, which actually dart. You can use the flukes, like the, you know, bass baby flukes. Um, I'm sorry, the like baby bass flukes. Um, those work great as well. You can even use those in salt water. Um, but I typically use this shrimp. It's the um, three inch 
an eight centimeters shrimp, uh, new penny colored. Um, so that's, that's my favorite right there. All right, so Christy, uh, my lovely wife, actually just did a, a great uh, tutorial on knots. Uh, so if you want to reference um, how to tie these knots, then you can check that video out as well. But um, the knot that I like to use from the main line to the popping cork is just a basic uh, polymer knot. Okay, so from the popping cork to our hook, to our jig head, we are gonna use our leader. Um, I go from anywhere, depending on what I'm fishing for, uh, 10 to 20 pound test. Uh, today I'm gonna use 20 pound test. And if you guys wanna just keep it very, very simple and have one, um, for all of your basic inshore species, 20 pound test will get the job done. So today I'm thinking we're gonna go about about three feet of leader line is what we're gonna do. Um, so the knot that we're gonna use uh, from the popping cork um, to our leader line, this knot, because we cannot use the polymer knot, which me personally is one of my most favorite, we're gonna use the improved clinch knot. So here we, this right here is our popping cork setup. <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get on the water and we're gonna catch some fish. I'm gonna show you guys how to use it on the water. beach at the Chesapeake Bay. This is where we're at and um, we're going to do a little bit of an on the water tutorial of the popping cork. Alright y'all so here we are. We are out on the jetty and as you can see with all these beautiful rocks all around me that this is an excellent place for the popping cork. So here I am. I got about a three foot leader to keep it off of the rocks and we're just going to cast it out um, right here and show you guys the right technique for the popping cork. So when you cast it out, when that popper hits the water, you want to give it, um, you want to be pretty quick with that first twitch um, because the sound of the bait hitting the water with the popping cork will already draw the attention of the fish. Um, so when it hits the water and you give it that first pop and even sometimes when it hits the water, I'll give it a quick like one, two, like that. Um, just because that's like a bait fish, like, oh crap, I gotta get it, I gotta get um, out of harm's way, you know, if all these predator fish are around me. Um, and, uh, and then I just kind of, my uh, cadence um, for the pops, which are these just very subtle twitches, is about every like three seconds. All right, so we're gonna cast it out. As soon as it hits, I'm gonna flip the bail over and I'm gonna give it a quick twitch. Um, the thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna go too fast. Um, you want to allow the action of the jig head to make its full arc. So if you go too quick, it's gonna just remain on top of the water as opposed to really like sitting. And then you pop it and then the shrimp will jump or the swimming mullet, whatever you're using. A lot of my bites come from when I twitch it and I'm like looking around, I'm talking to my friend, uh, I'm checking my phone, and I just see my bobber like dip. So definitely do not want to fish it too fast. You'll miss a lot of hook sets with the popping cork. That's one thing that um, if you were to be critical of the popping cork, that's one thing that is a downside of it is um, that you will miss uh, quite a bit of hook sets um, unless that you're keeping your main line tight to your popping cork. So I'll show you what I mean. So when you cast it out and you give it those pops, if you're not reeling but you're just popping, 
then your line's gonna create a lot of slack. You're gonna have a, a big bow in your line. If that fish were to you know, take my bait right now, it'd be very hard for me to set the hook. So you wanna make sure that um, as you're popping it, that you're keeping your line tight. All right, y'all, so this ain't nothing to write home about, but so uh, this is the popping cork right here, and uh, come try it out.